Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on cis loop ligand gated ion channels. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, continue our discussion of the glycine receptor, and we're going to see the involvement of the glycine receptor in a condition known as progressive encephalomyelitis with rigidity and myoclonus. Okay, so progressive encephalomyelitis, which means inflammation of uh, the encephalon, which is another name for the uh, brain and spinal cord, encephalon, encephalomyelitis, okay, myelitis, with rigidity and myoclonus. Okay, and this basically is going to um, lead to the dysfunction of the glycine receptors. Well, one of the causes of progressive encephalomyelitis with rigidity and myoclonus is dysfunction of uh, the uh, glycine receptors, and we'll see how. Basically, you create an antibody against them. So it's kind of like myasthenia gravis, uh, but for the glycine receptor rather than the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor at the neuromuscular junctions. Okay, right. So, uh, the way we're going to structure this video uh, is we're going to start off with a discussion of the role of the glycine receptors in the spinal cord. We're then going to look at the structure of the glycine receptor, and we'll then finally talk about um, this antibody that's going to be created against a certain subunit of the glycine receptor that is important within the spinal cord. Okay, uh, and I should just mention that progressive encephalomyelitis with rigidity and myoclonus, because it's such a mouthful, it's often abbreviated to its initials, PE for progressive encephalomyelitis, R for rigidity, and then M for myoclonus, it's often abbreviated to PERM. Okay, right, so let's begin by looking at the role of glycine receptors within the spinal cord. Okay, so we'll start off with the ligand for glycine receptors. We'll start off with glycine itself. So glycine is a proteinergic amino acid, and it's the simplest of the proteinergic amino acids. So let's draw uh, the core amino acid structure firstly. So here's the alpha carbon with the amino group coming off. Here's a hydrogen coming off the alpha carbon. And then also coming off the alpha carbon, you then have the carboxylic acid group. Okay, now this is common to all proteinergic amino acids, this structure. What then varies between the proteinergic amino acids is which um, R group you have coming off this final bond that the carbon has. Now in glycine, it's a very simple R group. You just have a hydrogen bound to that carbon. So this is the structure of the amino acid glycine. And the three letter amino acid code for glycine is gly and the single letter amino acid code for glycine is just a G. Right, okay, so now let's have a look at the role of glycine in the uh, spinal cord. Now, GABA is the major inhibitory neurotransmitter within the brain. So when you release GABA onto uh, another neuron, it causes inhibition of that neuron. It makes that uh, postsynaptic neuron less likely to fire an action potential. Glycine is the uh, main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the spinal cord, and it's also used in the brain stem. Okay, but the spinal cord is generally what we quote it as, uh, as its sort of jurisdiction. Right, so let's draw a picture of the spinal cord then. Right, so we'll have a transverse cross section here. So the spinal cord is this sort of oval shape, okay, so here is the spinal cord, and then right at the front it's got this fissure that comes in called the uh, median ventral fissure, so let me draw this, so we'll have the median ventral fissure here, okay, so I'll label this up, so this is the front of the spinal cord here, or the uh, ventral portion of the spinal cord. Uh, so this is the portion facing your belly button, if you like, your tummy, and this is the dorsal portion facing your back. Okay, now, the first landmark we've put on is this fissure that you have at the front of the spinal cord, and this is known as the median, because it's in the middle, uh, ventral, because it's at the front, and then fissure, because it is a fissure. So it's the median ventral fissure. Okay, now you also have a uh, little sort of crack coming down the back, but this isn't 
open nearly as much as the ventral median fissure. So instead, what you have is a folding in of the uh, surface of the spinal cord, but it's not really an open uh, fissure like the uh, median ventral fissure is. So this is what's known as a uh, sulcus. So this is known as the median dorsal sulcus. Median dorsal sulcus. And I have to be careful about where I'm putting these labels because I want to draw something over here in a moment. Right, so the spinal cord consists of both white matter and grey matter. Now the grey matter is where the cell bodies of the neurons are, and the white matter is where uh, the axons of the neurons are. So the grey matter comes off in this sort of characteristic shape that is often compared to a butterfly. Okay, so here is the grey matter, so you have it like this. You have this process going back dorsally here, known as the dorsal grey matter horn, and you have a large process coming off the front here, known as the ventral um, horn, okay, or the ventral grey matter horn in full. So then here comes the... So that's quite a nice little picture. There's the grey matter then. So this shape here, this is all grey matter. And right through the middle here, you have something known as the central canal. So let me label this up. So this is the central canal. And this has cerebrospinal fluid, uh, well, within it. Okay, so this is the central canal that runs right down the middle of the spinal cord. And it's the continuation of the ventricles within the brain. So it's the continuation of the fourth ventricle right down into the spinal cord. Okay, now let's enable up some of these horns then. So, uh, this process of the grey matter that comes forward here, this is known as the ventral horn. So this process at the front, towards the front of the spinal cord, this is known as the ventral horn. And you have two ventral horns. You have one on the uh, right side here and one on the left side here. So specifically, the one I'm labelling is the right ventral horn. Okay. And then this uh, process uh, at the posterior side over here, this is a, also called a horn. Uh, and this is the dorsal horn, so the dorsal grey matter horn, if you were being uh, completely full about this. Uh, and again, you have two of these. You have a right dorsal horn and a left dorsal horn. So this is the right dorsal horn that I've pointed to here. Right dorsal horn. Now, um, there, are, um, there are two uh, roots coming out of the spinal cord. So you have basically nerve roots that come out of the spinal cord, and these are visible. You'll be able to see these if you ever have a look at a spinal cord, okay? And one of them is the sensory fibres which are coming into the spinal cord. So this is actually neurons coming into the spinal cord. And the other one is motor fibres going out of the spinal cord. Okay, so let me label these two up. So, here is the uh, dorsal root, okay? This is the dorsal root of the spinal cord, and this is the a ventral root. Okay, and you have these at all different levels of the spinal cord. So all along the uh, axis of the spinal cord, you have ventral and dorsal roots coming out. Okay, so this is a ventral root. Now, what is this big bulge that I've drawn here? Well, basically, this is where the cell bodies of the sensory neurons uh, that are going into the spinal cord uh, are located, and this is what's known as the dorsal root ganglion, okay? So this is the dorsal root ganglion. So when you have cell bodies of neurons which are located outside of the central nervous system, and this is counted as outside of the central nervous system, that's then known as a ganglion. So we have a collection of cell bodies of neurons that is outside of the spinal cord and the brain. It's known as a, a ganglion. So this is an example of a ganglion. Then these two uh, roots join together to make a mixed spinal nerve. So this is the mixed spinal nerve. Okay, right. So to review, firstly, let's just do the sensory neurons, just to have a complete picture. They're not actually going to be terribly relevant for us at the moment, but um, we will just revise them, just so that you've got a complete picture. So basically... Um, Sensory neurons will be coming in 
in the mixed spinal nerve. So axons of sensory neurons will be coming in in the mixed spinal nerve and they will be carrying signals from the periphery uh, which indicate uh, sensory stimuli. Okay, And these axons come in and then they have their cell body located somewhere in this dorsal root ganglion here. So here's the axon going out here. Okay, and that will uh, be coming from some uh, sensory uh, organ, well, some sensory organ, basically. Maybe a Pacinian corpus or something. Okay, and uh, then this doesn't end here. Instead, it has another process, which then goes into the spinal cord through this dorsal root here. Okay, now, uh, some of the sensory uh, neurons then will go into... Uh, directly into um, the uh, white matter columns and they'll go up to the brain. So for instance, often sensory neurons will go straight into the dorsal column and then go up directly to the brain. So this primary sensory afferent makes it up all the way to the brain basically. It carries the information from the sensory apparatus all the way up to the brain. Alternatively, some sensory neurons will synapse in the spinal cord onto a secondary neuron which will then go into one of the white matter columns and um, carry the signal up to the brain. Okay, so let me just highlight in this primary sensory afferent as it will be called here in orange. So this is a primary sensory afferent neuron. Okay, so this is its um, central process coming into the spinal cord. Here's its cell body in the dorsal root ganglion, and here's its peripheral process going off into um, the uh, peripheral body. All right, okay, now we should probably talk a little bit about these, um, well actually maybe we should talk about the motor motor neurons first, since we've done the sensory neurons. Now, this ventral root, this contains the motor neurons, the alpha motor neurons, that are going out of the, um, out of the spinal cord. So all the sensory neurons, they all go into the dorsal root and have their cell bodies in the dorsal root ganglion, whereas the motor neurons, they all have their cell bodies in uh, the ventral root here, and then they send their axons out, sorry, they ha all have their cell bodies in the ventral horn here, and they send their axons out in the ventral root, and then their axons will join with the sensory aff um, afferent um, axons in the mixed spinal nerve over here. Okay, and that's why it's called a mixed spinal nerve, because it contains both motor fibres and sensory fibres. So here in blue, this is the motor fibre here. Okay, and its cell body is in this ventral horn here. Right, we'll continue this discussion in the next video.